Hello and welcome to this edition of Age of Truth TV. I'm Lucas Alexander. The former chief medical officer for Finland, Dr. Rauni Lena Lukan in Kilde, sadly passed away on February 8th, 2015. Age of Truth TV did two interview documentaries with Dr. Rauni Kilde, one in 2012 called The Grand Dame of Consciousness, made in Norway, and another one made in Copenhagen in 2013 called Global Illumination and Spiritual Awareness. Today we'll be honoring the memory of Dr. Rauni Kilde, talking about her legacy and what she leaves behind. She's an author of many books on controversial topics, and we'll be talking to a couple of her colleagues, Danish truth researcher, author and lecturer Ole Damegård, and British investigative truth researcher and producer of The Basis Project, Miles Johnston. can do anything with our thoughts and awareness 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 and then start thinking positively 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 that the world will change and people do not think if they don't know and it's it's absolutely not to be fearful because that's what the elite wants that's how they manipulate mankind because of fear so no fear absolutely no fear consciousness awareness and send love and light love and light Especially well, those who are in the elite, because they need it most. We can call them Illuminati. The name means nothing, actually. But there is a group of people who steer this planet. And they are multimillionaires, often Zionists. That doesn't mean that they're Jewish, all of them. You can be a Zionist, you know, for Israel without being a Jew. But they own the mass media in general. They own the money they really steer the world. And if you don't obey what they say, something happens. Dr. Rauni Kilde was a very controversial and very outspoken lady, but she was also very warm-hearted and loving and wonderful person. And um, it is interesting to talk to some of her, if we could call it colleagues, about her legacy and about what she meant to the world of truth-seeking and conspiracy research. And we're now joined by conspiracy researcher and author Ole Damegård, who is here in Copenhagen to talk about the recent terror attacks that took place here in Copenhagen. And uh, Ole Damegård, welcome here, and please talk to us for a moment about what your thoughts are on the legacy of Dr. Rauni Kilde and what she meant to the world of conspiracy research. I, n I never had the, the joy of meeting her in person. We were in touch and so on. I, th I thought she was an amazing woman, beautiful human being, massive big heart, very generous, very, very brave and with a knowledge that was amazing. What happened to her? This is the thing, when you get into this world of conspiracies, there are natural deaths, and sometimes there are people taken out, you know? And it's very easy to go, just jump into a conclusion that, no, they were murdered, no, they were hit, you know? No, people die as well, you know? Heart attacks and accidents are a thing, it's part of normal life. With her, I have no idea. Normally, when they take out someone, the only reason we're talking about her being murdered is because this is a rumor that circulates. Because that she sent uh, out emails before she died saying that she was under attack, that she, was, uh, she felt that uh, they were trying to get to her and, and, and so on. And so this is why we're even mentioning this thing, because she was an old lady as well. I don't know, I have not had the time to look into it. 
I, I don't know. I don't want to jump into any conclusion. What I do know is that when people are taken out, it's very often in a situation where they're just about to publish something major, something that would be a threat to the people in power. Would it come out? As far as I know, she was not in a position or in a situation right now doing that. She had a, an, a, an English-speaking book coming out that she had just finished, actually, that she wanted to publish or maybe self-publish because it was a sh very controversial. But her death did did it stop the publication or it has not been published it has yet. not been published but maybe her death can even boost the whole thing mm -hmm. again so had it mm -hmm. stopped the publication that would have been a possible motive even though depends on what's in the book mm -hmm. i have no idea mm -hmm. so i'm i don't want to jump into any conclusion mm -hmm. i just want to honor her memory and say my god roundy what a woman you were what w the gifts you given to the rest of i just want to salute her her bravery and the way she spread this information because she did it in a beautiful way a loving way uh, i get goosebumps when i think of her so that's my opinion my take of it great thank you I was the principal photographer and director of both documentary films that we did with Dr. Rauni Kilde for Age of Truth TV. And the first time I met her was in 2012 in her own home where we did the first interview. And she was, she was a very loving and warm-hearted person. I could feel that immediately when I met her. And her own home was very unique because she filled it up with so many special and personal things that you could just feel was a manifestation of her own unique person. And when we did the interviews, Lucas and her made a very special connection, I felt. And um, because she, she was very honest and very interesting to listen to. to. And um, the topics that she talked about was very, very mind-blowing and controversial. But um, she was a very unique person and we will miss her a lot now that she's gone. And I hope that still a lot of new people will see her and recognize this loving being and uh, see what kind of difference that she really did to the world. Dr. Rauni Kilde was 75 years old when she passed away. And she was interviewed by many over the years and she became a friend to many of us who met her. One of her friends who also interviewed her for The Basis Project is British investigative journalist and producer of The Basis Project, Miles Johnston, who is now joining us from his home in England. Thank you very much for joining us, Miles, and please tell us a little bit about Dr. Rowney and how you experienced being with her, doing your interviews, and how you met her through Rowney's friend and his. Rowney explained there is no death, but Rowney was a pioneer, a leader, a leader amongst her peers and a leader across the world. The little clip that uh, she gave me on the swine flu was over three and a half million hits before it was banned on YouTube. Although they didn't ban the full interview, they just banned that clip where she was warning about the swine flu. Yet it was banned on the 31st of December and on the 1st of January, the EU was about to open up a major investigation into this. That was a few short years ago. But that was the very first time I'd actually properly met her. I first saw her in 1994 in Mesquite in the United States, right on the border in Nevada, where the International UFO Congress, at that time very pioneering in the kind of people it had, Rowney was speaking on mind control, once again pioneering and leading the way. Well, I met a wonderful lady called Anna Hess at the UFO Congress. We became great friends. And um, one fine day, she knew that I had a great interest in Rowney. She just uh, called me up from Norway, handed, handed the phone to Rowney, and there I was speaking to her. So we arranged to do an interview. And in Christmas, or December 2008, I went out there with my little digital video camera, and we did some tremendous interviews. A lot of that interview was lost. A lot of people feel that uh, Rowney was somehow, you know, don't be so silly, this targeted individual thing that isn't happening. Well, it is happening. 
I lost 40 minutes of that interview. And what happened was there were some artifacts left in her house and she showed them to me. They were actually keys for a Volkswagen car, but there were some other things with it. And when she showed me the artifacts or the, the key ring, uh, when I zoomed in the camera on it, the next 20 minutes that I needed you were wiped. Secondly, when she talked about a UFO conference in, in Moscow with Stubblebine and other elite people in the US military and NATO, that particular section was once again deleted. Or what happened was, as I subsequently find out, some kind of signal hit the camera at certain crucial points in the interview and caused too much of a disruption so I couldn't copy the files. So I had to go back again six months later in the summer 2009 and re-interview her. And that became Basis 5. And that was the first of the most wonderful interviews I've been able to do. And thanks to Rowney. But Rowney said there is no death. She went out of body and she explained how she was able to leave her body and measure her own pulse. And a lot of observers just don't really understand how significant that is. That means that when you leave your body, you have physical touch, you have sensation, you can make measurements and take coherent physical action while out of your body. Rowney had written a lot of books and I'd asked her many, many times and the many times that I was overseeing her and we became really good friends and really, I really enjoyed every moment with Rowney. We got on well, so well together and it still is a great uh, tragedy and loss that I'm even sitting here saying this. But we wanted to get Rowney, I wanted to get Rowney to write her book in English. She made one attempt, first attempt, and uh, abandoned that because the, the people who were doing the transcribing basically didn't want to seem to proceed and uh, there was a lot of problems and it basically didn't happen. Miles Johnston and Rowney's dear friend Anne Hess went to her home in Sun in Norway just shortly after she passed away. Here's a clip of that from the Basis Project. So we are at the Dr. Rowney Lena Lukan and Kilda's home now. It's abandoned. But this is where Miles did the, the interview. And she considered this that to be the safest place in the world. Uh, and the the least uh, targeted spot in her property. She, she used to sit here all summer long, every day, edit, read articles, and she, had, she has stacks of them. And um, we could have, have been partying the night before or been going out downtown or been at sea or something, and she would Next morning she would be up, and uh, you couldn't you couldn't disturb her much here. So uh, it's strange it's strange that she's gone, and uh, we are we miss her. But yeah, she was sick, and she had been sick for some time. She had cancer for at least two years. She had melanoma. She had stomach cancer. But she didn't like to go to the doctor. She was a doctor. She was a medical doctor herself. She has been practicing for 30 years. But uh, she, uh, she preferred healing, the healing arts of all sorts. But she didn't care about these kind of things. She, was, she had this feeling and knowing inside that she was protected whatever happened. She said that many a time, even though she uh, she, uh, she was targeted and she, was, she said she was on the, the, the hit list, she called it. Of course, when I had, I thought, learned enough about the paranormal, telepathy, contact with the energy of the dead and um, clairvoyance uh, and things like that, then I went into ufology. It was like next step. Mm -hmm. And after ufology, when I learned enough, talked to cosmonauts, talked to astronauts, read all the possible military reports through Freedom of Information Act, then I went into mind control. Yeah. So 
you know, it goes like this. And what comes after mind control, I don't know, but I'm sure it's just as exciting. Wow. In your first book, it was in 1982, it was called There Is No Death. You talk about the human spirit having infinite life and infinite consciousness. And you talk about the fact that people should remove themselves from the fear of death. No death, no dying. But what exactly do you mean by there is no death? Well, number one, we have to ask, what is it to be a human being on this planet? Now, we always concentrate on the body, male, female, cat to dog, elephant, whatever, dolphin. Now, actually, medically, about 70% of our body is water. 70%. 87% of our brain is water. Think of it. I mean, people don't think of that, this, and, and doctors don't even remember it, generally. So what holds us together? That's energy. And according to Einstein, energy never, never vanishes. It only changes form, goes to another frequency. So we are actually antennas, we are energy beings. And then, <clears throat> in religious terms, people say that, well, we have a soul. Now, if I ask anybody, a priest or a minister or a medical doctor, where is this soul, what color, what, uh, what form, in, in what part of the body do we have it, or is it outside or what? They usually, 90%, don't know. But the old-fashioned concept that brain thinks is already old-fashioned. Brain doesn't think, but all brain cells vibrate. But what people don't know that every, every cell in your body vibrates, every one. And that vibration forms you into a light body. And that can be measured. So you are a light being. And of course, since it is vibrating so fast that you cannot see it with eyes, because we're very limited with our senses, so people don't know about it. But you can feel it. You can feel the energy. I can feel your energy. You're coming all the way here. Because you send your energy, and when you're happy and fine, it's, it's way out. And then when, if you're drunk or smoke or drug addict, sick or whatever, it, it, it crimps down. And, and you know, it's, it's very, very, very thin. Her book, especially the first one, There Is No Death. Was was like um, created a shockwave in Europe. It was it was that, and her message, she was channeling, and having uh, automatic writings, and uh, it, she said it was her grandmother who was uh, guiding her, in many ways. It was, it was warm and it was fun, and that is the real Rowney. So the, the last couple of years she was sick, and I think when I asked her, because she, she went on about how that they, they, they're not going to kill me, oh no, I'm going to survive this, and so on and so on. And I, you know, Rowney, it's the soul that's in charge here. And I don't know when, I don't know whether your soul has decided enough is enough. And I have a feeling it has, because I didn't tell her, but I saw, I, I, I was shown this. And she came the next day and said, very private, she didn't want anyone to know, she said, you know what, I'm dead tired. That, that was, uh, but that, that's one thing. And then you have the story, then the, 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 the way she was treated when she finally got to the hospital. She was put in the corridor like so many others. And she was treated with uh, uh, ig ignorance and, uh, and arrogance. She said she was, she was afraid they weren't going to take her and that she would disappear. But that could have not have happened. But, but she was really afraid of this. But when she finally got there, she was there three days and then she didn't want anymore. She said, I'm enough of this and she came back home. So she spent uh, the Christmas in her house, and then eventually her cousin came, and we came every day. She didn't want to move anywhere, she wanted to stay here, and we brought her food and came down every day to talk with her. And then her cousin came, took her to Finland, where she lived across the street for, from the hospital. And so she got pain treatment in the end. And uh, she couldn't, she had a lot of pain, but uh, she said one thing, 
and uh, I think this is important for her friends around the world to know. And that is that the book she'd been working on that was going to come out in English. Uh, she had been working on this book for at least two years and she was very excited about it. But she was also very upset because the, the, um, the publisher, he did a lousy job, she said. There were so many, not only spelling mistake, but the reference was not correct. And she sent back, it went back and forth, back and forth. And also she, she said that a couple of instances that people that she did not trust at all were put high up on the list of a re further reading and reference list. And, and that annoyed her immensely. And so she decided before a couple of uh, maybe a week or, or 10 days or something before she died that she the book was not coming out because it was these mistakes could not be uh, corrected and she did not want to have a, a half good product. So that was her her choice. People after had the, have uh, they wanted to 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 publish the book any anyway but that was her wish. So so that's all I know about that. Meeting Rowney again in Brussels at the Targeted Individuals Conference was a great joy and it was wonderful. She was full of energy, she was feisty and fighting fit. But some observers had noticed that she'd taken off quite a lot of weight. Rowney was actually keeping up a brave fight. Rowney was being gaslighted. Her house was being targeted and evidence of that happened even after she was dead when uh, me and Anna recorded an obituary to her life. My microphone got completely wiped out and when Anna discussed this targeting, her microphone also got a hit. So I'm doing this now. Rowney was a pioneer in highlighting the covert harassment and targeting of individuals. She showed me all uh, that her body was suffering very badly from some kind of radiation. She kept on saying she was being beamed. Uh, there were subtle little things happening with her post box. All sorts of little things. And she said, they see with your eyes and hear with your ears. That's because they get inside your head and can see everything and hear everything you do. They remote view inside you. They don't need, they don't need to necessarily put implants in there, although a lot of people now have these implants. Rowney was pioneering this. You and Rowney's friend Anne Hess spent quite some time with Rowney in Norway, also during her illness in the past couple of months. Please tell us what happened to her and why she suddenly uh, fell so ill. What was actually happening was she was actually taking off quite a lot of weight. She had cancer. And when I met her again in Soon, where she lived, just beside my dear friend Anna, she was suffering a huge amount of pain. And in December, just before Christmas, she just suffered so much pain. She made the call and we went down and uh, helped her get to hospital. She suffered severely, but put a brave face on it. And she was fantastic. I remember saying, but roundly there is no death. And then she lay, uh, got to lay on the ambulance thing, she, she smiled. Well, let's celebrate Rowney, not mourn her. Rowney gave me uh, a cigar to celebrate this new house, which I'm now in. And I took some of the ashes for the cigar and put it into this concrete. So, at some point, there's going to be a little bit of Rowney in this house for as long as this house stands. Thanks to Rowney, thanks to her pioneering, brilliant efforts. Let's celebrate Rowney Kilda, a wonderful woman, a brilliant life. And let's recognise the fight that she stands for and realise we have got a fight on our hands. Let's make sure we win that fight. We knew Rowney from uh, not as the lecturer of difficult topics. I have known her for, for some 20, 20 some years and, and uh, 
we we had uh, we went to to conference together and so on but she didn't talk about history and and politics and other things and and uh, that that's her private side she was interested Rowney was interested in everything you see he she was i never known anybody so socially interested if there was a as a choir uh, performing in the church she would know about it and she would want to go or if they were in the library something would happen she would know she could remember all dates and everything her, her mind works so brilliantly it, it's uh it's a rare she, but she was an intellectual or academic Rowney, thank you thanks from the basis project dear Rowney kildo Miles Johnson of The Basis Project, thank you very much for doing this interview for Age of Truth TV and sharing your thoughts and your memories about Dr. Rowney Kilde. And we'd like to thank all of you for watching. Please watch our shows with Dr. Rowney Kilde, The Grand Dame of Consciousness, and Global Illumination and Spiritual Awareness. Thank you to Miles Johnson and Hess. And also thank you to Ole Damigor for sharing memories and thoughts on Dr. Rowney Kilde. She will be remembered by so many in the field of truth research and certainly by the Age of Truth team. Thank you very much and we'll see you again. A human being is not the handicapped body. And besides, we have all chosen the bodies that is our energy body which is in eternal because Einstein says that you know you you or said that energy only changes form it doesn't disappear all of a sudden my my energy body left and I was a young doctor it was incredible because I was floating exactly as a copy of my physical body exactly as a copy but it looked like skim milk and it was floating towards the ceiling and I was looking down and good Lord, I saw the surgeon who had opened my stomach and was operating on me. And I thought, oh, good Lord, I'd never seen myself like that before, of course. And a being of light came in front of me. And it was so bright that I had to kneel. And it looked like, well, I'm a Lutheran by, by you know, birth, so it looked like Jesus' figure. And then it showed my whole life what's going to happen. And I couldn't understand, of course. And then whoosh, I came back to the body and I wake up. You just see the light, a being of light. And what does the being of light number one tell you? It says, what have you done with your life? What have you done with your life? And your life from your birth into this body to the moment that you're out because of a whatever accident or what. So everything you have said, everything you have experienced, just goes like a film like this and then you see where you've done wrong and were thought wrong and hey there, there that was not good and this was good and you sort of you're corrected in a way you want to make good and then you sometimes get a, a chance to will you be on the other side or will you come back to earth to your body and generally people don't want to come back to the body because this is not a very elevated planet there are a lot of people who are very, very ignorant here and we're aggressive and we don't use our brain capacity. We, normally we don't use 90% of our brain capacity. So most people experience they don't want to go back because it is harmonious, it's beautiful surroundings and the other frequency where you are. So your own thoughts, your own expectations, they decide how you experience the other dimensions. Oh, my God.